Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the channel and today I'm going to go to my review of WCW's Uncensored 1998. Starting off the evening we're going to go to our first match of the night. It is for the WCW Television Championship. It is Eddie Guerrero versus Booker T. I thought this was a good matchup. Back and forth matchup between Guerrero and Booker T with Guerrero keeping the pace of the match. Booker T then gets up, hits a press slam on Guerrero. Booker T then hits a head scissors or a scissors kick on Guerrero. And then Booker T ultimately hits a drop kick off the top rope on Guerrero, pins him for the three. And your winner of the match is Booker T. Hats off to Booker T for getting the win in this matchup. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night. It is Conan versus Juventud Guerrera. I thought this was a good matchup. Back and forth matchup between Conan and Guerrera with Conan keeping the pace of the match. But Guerrera hits a roll up on Conan. Pins for the three. And your winner of the match is Juventud Guerrera. Hats off to Juventud Guerrera for getting the win in this matchup. Moving on from that. We go into our next match of the night. It is for the WCW Cruiserweight Championship. It is Dean Malenko versus Chris Jericho. I thought this was a great match. Back and forth matchup between Malenko and Jericho with Malenko keeping the pace of the match. Jericho then hits a, moon, a lion salt on Malenko. Malenko and Jericho both exchange in the middle of the ring with Jericho ultimately applying his signature lion tamer on Dean Malenko. And your winner of the match is Chris Jericho. Hats off to Chris Jericho for getting the win in this matchup. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night. It is Lex Luger versus Scott Steiner. I thought this was a good matchup. Back and forth matchup between Lex Luger and Scott Steiner with Lex keeping the pace of the match. Lex then hits a power slam on Steiner in the middle of the ring. Rick Steiner makes his way out to the ring. Scott Norton then attacks Rick Steiner. Lex then capitalizes on the distraction, hits Scott with the forearm strike, pins for the three, and your winner of the match is Lex Luger. Hats off to Lex Luger for getting the win in this matchup. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night. It is a triple threat match for the WCW United States Championship. It is DDP versus Chris Benoit versus Raven. I thought this was a good match. Back and forth matchup between DDP, Benoit, and Raven with DDP keeping the pace of the match. DDP then uh, hits a diamond cutter on Raven through a table. Pins for the three. And your winner of the match is DDP. Hats off to DDP for getting the win in that matchup. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night. It is Kevin Nash versus the Giant. I thought this was a good matchup. Back and forth matchup between Nash and the Giant with the Giant keeping the pace of the match. NWO make their way out to the ring. NWO then attack the Giant. And your winner of the match due to disqualification is the Giant. Hats off to the Giant for getting the win in this matchup. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night. It is Kurt Henning versus Bret Hart. I thought this was a good matchup. Back and forth matchup between Henning and Hart with Henning keeping the pace of the match. Henning then applies a figure four leg lock on Hart, but the hold is broken. Henning then hits his signature fisherman suplex on Hart for a near fall, but Bret Hart applies the sharpshooter on Kurt Henning, and your winner of the match by submission is Bret Hart. Hats off to Bret Hart for getting the win in this matchup. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night. It is for the WCW World Heavyweight Championship. It is Scott Hall versus Sting. I thought this was a good matchup. Back and forth matchup between Hall and Sting with Hall keeping the pace of the match. Sting then hits a stinger splash on Hall. Hall then hits Sting with brass knuckles. Hall then goes for an outsider's edge, but Sting counters it with a scorpion death drop. Pins for the three. And your winner of the match, and still WCW World Heavyweight Champion, is Sting. Hats off to Sting for getting the win in this matchup. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night. It is the main event of WCW's Uncensored 1998. It is a steel cage matchup. It is Hollywood Hogan versus Randy Savage. I thought this was a good matchup. Back and forth matchup between Hogan and Savage with Hogan keeping the pace of the match. 
But this match ultimately ends in a no contest. Couple things I want to say about Uncensored 1998 before I get out of here, man. Number one, this was a solid event. Um, to me, Uncensored was kind of like WCW's Extreme Rules. It was always those matches that they put on the card that was no disqualification, no holds barred, anything goes. And it kind of reminded reminds me a lot of you know WWE's Extreme Rules nowadays. Um, with that being said, you know the way they have the format lined up for the show, it's kind of like you know you're c- trying to. Uh, how do I put this? You're trying to end feuds and start new ones, pretty much. And a, a lot of times, a lot of shows do that. Uh, but I think Uncensored 1998 or Uncensored in general try to do it with a little bit of vengeance, you know, especially with the no DQs, the cage matches, uh, so on and so forth. But with that being said, um, there was a couple matches on this card that I actually really did enjoy. Number one, Eddie Guerrero versus Booker T for the television championship. Solid matchup. Two Hall of Famers, and uh, to be honest with you, two of the best that ever do it with Eddie Guerrero and Booker T. Uh, Dean Malenko versus Chris Jericho for the Cruiserweight Championship, man. I mentioned this multiple times now, how underrated the Cruiserweight division was and forever will be for the uh, for the WCW. Um, for WCW. It, it just, the Cruiserweight division was severely underrated. I, you know, for the, the amount of names that walked through that door that had wrestled for the Cruiserweight division for WCW, the likes of Dean Malenko, Jericho, Guerrero, Rey Mysterio Jr., Juventu Guerrero, Psychosis, uh, Ultimo Dragon. I mean, the amount of names that have walked through that door and have competed in that Cruiserweight division for the Cruiserweight Championship is outstanding, man. Some of the best talent in the world, you know, and at one point it was all under the WCW banner, man. It's absolutely insane. And for what it's worth, I think any, you know, match that, you know, WCW put together with the Cruiserweights could have easily main evented any WCW pay-per-view card uh, back then, easily. I mean, the amount of talent they had was just uncanny, man. It was unreal how much talent they had in that cruiserweight division, man. It was severely underrated, in my honest opinion. Uh, the triple threat match between DDP, Benoit, and Raven, it was a solid matchup uh, with DDP uh, getting the victory over Benoit and Raven to retain the United States Championship. Uh, one of the other matches that really intrigued me was Kurt Henning versus, versus Bret Hart. Now, to me, the, one of the biggest reasons why this match intrigued me, man, was because I did look into their WWE run. You know, Bret Hart, you know, a multi-time world champion, uh, intercontinental champion as well, and Kurt Henning. I still believe Kurt Henning is one of the greatest intercontinental champions of all time. And back in the day, man, the intercontinental championship, the way it was being booked, was almost, if not more important than the WWE championship. I mean, it was absolutely insane. And uh, both Bret Hart and Kurt Henning both have held the Intercontinental Championship, so it was kind of it was kind of cool to see that you know nostalgic moment, if you will, on this pay per view with Kurt Henning facing off against Bret Hart. I mean, it kind of relived the old you know WWE days too. Man, it was it was kind of cool to see that. But uh, Bret Hart, you know, got the victory over Kurt Henning with the Sharpshooter in that matchup. Uh, and then the main event: Hollywood Hogan versus Randy Savage. Uh, Best friends turn bitter enemies. You know what I mean? I mean, the, the storyline between Randy and Hogan has gone on, I mean, God, man, probably since WrestleMania, I would say WrestleMania 3, WrestleMania 2. Um, you know, obviously, you know, the 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 team of the Mega Powers and, and how everything went down between Hogan and Randy. Uh, the match they had, I believe it was WrestleMania 5, if I'm not mistaken, when the Mega Powers collided with uh, Randy and uh, Hogan. And it made for a great match, man. And honestly, it was one of those storylines that went on for so long. Even, I would say up to probably when Randy had passed away. I think there was still a little hostility between both Randy and Hogan. Even in real life, man, I think there was legit beef between Hogan and Randy. And, uh, you know, the back and forth banner they had, you know, their time in WCW, obviously, you know, it was one of those things where, you know, Hogan and Randy, you know, they seemed to be cool. You know, obviously when Randy came over to WCW after Hogan, you know, they aligned themselves together, uh, kind of redid the mega powers, if you will, and then obviously NWO was formed, and Randy, you know, the jump ship to the NWO. But again, after a while of Randy being in the NWO, you know, him and Hogan had heat, and then the Wolf Pack was born, and everything else. So I mean, it was there was always that you know keep your friends close, but your enemies closer kind of deal. And I always thought about that when it pertained to Randy and Hogan. You know, two of the best, honestly, two of the best that I've ever done it. I know there's a lot of people out there that do not like Hogan. Uh, but you got to give the man credit where credit's due. I mean, he honestly put wrestling on his back, made it prime time. You know, a lot of people, if you don't know professional wrestling, you guys damn well know about Hulk Hogan. 
Uh, and honestly, he was, I think he was one of the main guys that popular, you know, popularized the sport, to be honest with you. And I think, you know, for that mindset alone, you have, you have to give Hogan credit. You know, the, the matches that Hogan has had, you know, the match that put him over the top with him and Iron Sheik, uh, I think that was WrestleMania 1, uh, really, you know, kind of solidified Hogan. And, and Hogan has had a hell of a career. Had some really good matches with Flair, especially in WCW. Um, matches with Taker, matches with Yokozuna. Um, he's had a hell of a career, man. So you really can't take that away from Hogan. And it's the same thing with Randy. I think Randy <clears throat> at times gets overlooked by Hogan, especially the storyline between the two, because sometimes I feel like Hogan might be the bigger name. I mean, I, me personally, I'm a Randy Savage fan. Um, but imagine that. I mean, my thing is this, man. The Mega Powers tag team alone was fantastic. But it was was it Dune from the get go? Sure. You got two egos, man, that are teaming up that are just bigger than the entire arena that they're wrestling in. So, I mean, eventually they were going to explode, and that's what happened. And, again, man, it was one of those things where, just look how long that storyline literally went between Hogan and Randy. I mean, it went on for a long, long time, man. You're talking from, like I said, WrestleMania, maybe WrestleMania 2 or 3. You know, I know Randy had the match at WrestleMania 3 with Ricky the Steamboat, and then obviously Hogan had the WrestleMania 3 match with the Giant. Um, but there was inner turmoil between Hogan and Randy, and that lead, you know, that went all the way into like the mid 90s to late 90s. And that's what ha- that's why we had this main event here between Hogan and Randy. You know, I, and obviously the turmoil that they had within the NWO and everything else like that. So, you know, the story kind of wrote itself, man. And honestly, I'm not going to sit here and say that, you know, that w, you know, WCW's Uncensored 1998 had everything to do with Hogan and Randy, but it made for a really good matchup, in my honest opinion. But with that being said, just like I do with every single one of these pay-per-views, man, you guys know by now, I always give these pay-per-views a rating from 1 out of a 10. 1 being the absolute worst, 10 being the absolute best. I'm going to have to give WCW's Uncensored 1998 a solid 5 at best, but... This is my review of WCW's Uncensored 1998. I hope you guys are out there staying safe. Be careful. And remember, stay classic. Peace.